Good evening, family. Welcome this evening to Bible Way Community Baptist Church, the place where Jesus Christ is still the Lord of all and the Word of God still transform lives. We're excited and delighted that you've tuned in this evening to be a part of our Wednesday night broadcast. We hope and pray that you've had a good day and a real good week in the Lord. And we are so thankful to Almighty God that he has allowed us to see another Wednesday and has allowed us to come together one more time. Amen, amen, and amen. And we have a wonderful lesson for you tonight. Uh, tonight we'll be looking again at uh, the study of man. But before we go into our lesson, let's first go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for who you are, the God who hear and you still answer prayers. Now, Lord, speak to our hearts in a mighty way. Lead, guide, and direct us in all that we say and do so that honor and glory can be ascribed to your holy and righteous name. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. You can see the title of our lesson here is Man. We've been looking at the study of man. We just finished the study of salvation. And now this is the second lesson, lesson number two in the study of man. What is man's nature like? What is man's nature like? What, what is man like inside out? How is man built, in other words? And so uh, that's what we're going to be looking at tonight, uh, the nature of man. But first, I want you to watch this YouTube clip. Watch this. All right, all right now, notice how those pigs, <laughs> they enjoying the mud. They are enjoying the mud. It's nothing strange about those pigs enjoying the mud. But watch this other YouTube clip. Watch this. Now, it is something strange <laughs> about this man rolling around in the mud acting like a pig. Now, why is in the second clip that strange that a man is rolling around acting like a pig? But in the first clip, it was nothing strange about that because Pigs supposed to roll around in the mud. It's the nature 
of a pig to roll around in the mud. But it's not the nature of man to be rolling around in the mud. If a man like mud, then something is wrong with the man because it's not man's nature to like to roll around in a mud and act like a pig. So that's why we need to study tonight what is the nature of um, man? Because we see people today are acting real, real strange. And you wonder what done happened to this person. They are acting just like pigs. All right. So let's watch this. I mean, uh, let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. I want to give you five things tonight as it relates to the nature of a man. First of all, I want you to see the pattern, the pattern of man's creation. The pattern of man's creation. Uh, I want you to see the pattern of man's creation, the blueprint, if you please, of man's creation. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. And this is going to be a very familiar passage. As a matter of fact, uh, in most of these lessons, this verse is going to keep popping up uh, because it's the, a foundational verse as we are studying the nature of man. Genesis 1, 26 says, and God said, let us make man. In our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now, God's now notice what God says. He says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. In other words, God is going to use himself as the blueprint for man, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. What's on the inside of God, he's going to put the same thing or uh, some of the same thing, some of the same attributes in man, some of the same qualities in man. Uh, so what does it mean when he says he made man in his own image and likeness. Well, the Hebrew word for image means uh, to fashion, uh, a shape, uh, a representative figure. So God is going to shape man. He's going to fashion man. He's going to use man as a representative of his. Uh, the Hebrew word for likeness means similar to. So man is going to be created similar to God. He's going to be similar to him. And we're going to look at some of those attributes because there are some uh, uh, community attributes in other words some some stuff that's in God that God is going to give the man but then there's some attributes that man don't have that God has so God is not going to give man everything but he is going to give him some of those things that he has and that's what we're going to look at tonight when we talk about the image of um, man and the likeness a man. Man is created in the image and the likeness of God. And that's every man. That's every man that's created. Every man that's created is created in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. Therefore, to be made in the image and the likeness means that man is like God and represents God. That's basically what we're talking about. So to be created in the image of God means to be a living being as well. 
Look at what Acts 17, 28 and 29 says. For in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own port have said, for we are also his offsprings. For as much then as we are the offspring, somebody ought to say offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone or graven by art and man devices. See, man is the offspring of God. So when we are talking about to be created uh, in the image of God, it means that we are the offspring of God, to be a living being. It means that we are a living being. We are, we are, we are not like stones. We are not like gold. We are not like, we are living. We are living beings. Just like God is a living being, then uh, we are living beings just like God is a real person. Then we are a real person. Now, so every man that is born on the planet follows that pattern. Look at what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, verse number 1 through 3. It says, this is the book of the generation of Adam. In the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they was created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own image after his likeness and called his name Seth. So what we see here, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times people say, well, when man fell into sin, then uh, that messed up the image of, of God in man. So only Adam was created in the image of God and, and in the likeness of God. But look at what it says in Genesis 5, 1 and 3. It says this is the uh, book of the generation of Adam in the likeness of God may he him male and female, created he them. Do you see the them? So even though man uh, uh, was born uh, after, uh, every man that's born after Adam uh, has a fallen nature, but his, he still have the imprint of God on his life. He still was made still in the image of God. And we're going to talk about that further when we break down everything that's a, a part of the image of God. Because man is created in the image and likeness of God, notice what's all on the inside of man. Um, man has a, he has a soul. Man has a soul. Look, look at that. The word nathash means life. Man was created a living being, a living soul. Look at what it said, Genesis 2 and 7. And man became a living soul. Remember, God blowed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And that's what it's talking about. And man became a living soul. So man has a soul. The soul is used to speak of the center of the various spiritual and emotional experiences within man. Look at what the Bible says in Job chapter 30, verse 25. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? No, Job 
grieve just like God grieved. See, God grieved, and that's why the Bible tells us don't grieve the Holy Spirit and don't quench the Holy Spirit. See, God can be grieved, and just like God is grieved, man is grieved. Let's go along a little bit further. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7 and 8. And it says, And deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man, talking about lot, dwelling among them in sin and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So, his emotion, his, his, his emotion was disturbed. His, uh, the, uh, his, uh, the, on the inside of him was disturbed emotionally. Uh, uh, it talks about uh, that filthy conversation, and he's referring to all of that homosexuality that was going on there in the... Uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, from day to day, he got tired of hearing people talking about, you know, gay and gay sex and one, uh, you know, men's getting with men's and women's getting with women's. That vexed his, the Bible says, righteous soul. It vexed his soul. And just like God can be vexed, we uh, too can be vexed. So the soul is that part um, uh, that's that spiritual and emotional part of man. So Lot was disturbed on the inside. His soul was disturbed. Also, the soul is that part of man that depart at death. Yeah, that's the part that leaves at death, the soul. Look at what the Bible says, Genesis chapter 35 Verse 18, and it says, And it came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel, uh, who was the wife of Jacob, was having a baby. And the Bible says, as her soul was passing, as she was dying, and her soul was about to leave her body. She named the child Benoni, but uh, uh, Jacob named him Benjamin. So the soul is that part of you that uh, leaves at uh, death. And see, the soul has to deal with your five senses for the most part. That's your five senses, your hearing, your uh, seeing, your smelling, your tasting, and your touching. All of that leaves uh, when you die. Um, also, the soul, sometimes when the Bible talks about the soul, it's talking about the whole man. It's talking about the whole man. Look at what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse number 41. It says, then they gladly received his words and was baptized in the same day that was added unto them about 3,000 souls. So sometimes when the Bible talks about soul, it's just not just talking about the inside of man, it's talking about everything. It's talking about inside and the outside of man as well. So the context is going to let you know whether we're just talking about man's, you know, the five senses, just the inside of man, are uh, we talking about um, the whole man inside and outside of man? So when they baptized uh, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls were saved. That's inside and outside. But also when the Bible talks about uh, man, man has a soul, but man also has a spirit. Man not only have a soul, but man has a spirit. 
there's a word pneuma uh, refers only to the immaterial part of man. Unlike the soul, uh, which can refer to the whole man, the spirit just only refers to the immaterial part of man. It just refers to the inside of man. See, man is a soul, but man is not said to be a spirit. Yeah, yeah, see, um, uh, God says man became a living soul, but he didn't say he became a living spirit. So man is a soul, but man is not to be said to be, but it's not said to be a spirit. No, man has a spirit. Yeah, man has a spirit. A spirit lives inside a man. Their spirit originate from God and all people have a spirit. So everybody have a spirit. Everybody have a spirit. So every person, whether you save or whether you lost, you have a spirit. Now, uh, what, what is the function of the spirit? You know, the Bible talks about the spirit. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 9. It says, For more we have had fathers of the flesh which correct us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirit and live. See, God the Father, uh, at creation, he gave all of us a spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you are conceived in your mother's womb, you have a soul and you have a spirit. Now, uh, the spirit is that part of man which is capable of, of relating to God. The soul is that part of man that relates to self and the body. See, the soul relates to the natural world for the most part. Your eyes, you see stuff in the natural, don't you? you your ears hear stuff in the natural. Your nose, you take, I mean, you smell stuff, excuse me. You smell stuff in the natural. Uh, your mouth, you taste stuff in the natural. Your hands, uh, you touch stuff in the natural. So the soul uh, keeps you in touch with this world. But your spirit keeps you in touch with the unseen world. It's through your spirit that God communicate to your spirit. And so uh, you have a spirit to stay in touch with the spirit world. So the spirit is that part of man that help us do spiritual things. Uh, look at what the Bible says in John 4, 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. That's why you just can't worship God in the natural. You just can't worship God with your eyes, your ears, you know, what you can see and what you can hear. Because it's bigger than that. You got to worship God in the spirit. Yeah, you got to worship him in the spirit and you got to worship him with truth. In other words, according to his word. Look at what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 15. Um, it says, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and will sing with the understanding also. Now, why is Paul saying I'm going to pray with the uh, help of the spirit. I'm going to pray in the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I'm going to sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also because he realized that God is a spirit and if you want to contact God, you got to 
contact them from your spirit, not just from your soul. And so this is what he's doing. He said, when I pray, I pray with the spirit. I pray with the spirit. I pray with the understanding. I sang with the spirit. And I will sing with the understanding also. So that's what he's talking about when he's saying you got to worship God in spirit and in truth. You can't hold back. See, you can't hold back. You got to worship God not only with your soul. See, a lot of times people worship God with their soul, but a lot of times with your soul, your, your focus when it's soulish is on the natural. You're trying to just sing to please the people. You're trying to uh, preach to just please the people. You're trying to do things, uh, pray in such a way that everybody's going to say, oh, we boy, he sure prayed a, a beautiful prayer. He prays good. Yeah, uh, but if your prayer is not going uh, in the spirit and going to God, then your prayer didn't even go past the ceiling. If you ain't praying <laughs> in the spirit, Amen. Amen. He says you got to worship him. And so that's the deepest part of your being is your spirit. Uh, Romans 8, 16. Look at what it says. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. And let you know that you are indeed a child of God. See, it takes one to know one. So the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, he knows whether or not you are really saved or not. Because number one, he's on the inside of you. And so a lot of times people, they go to other people. You think I'm saved? You think I'm saved? The Holy Spirit, if you was really saved, you wouldn't have to so much ask that question. Because you got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost lets your spirit know that you save. Amen. Amen. That, and, and he gives you a peace that surpass all understanding. Yeah. See, your spirit, your spirit is just like a telephone. It's just like, take for instance, this telephone. All right, this cell phone. Let's say this cell, I wake up in the morning and I pick up my cell phone, but my cell phone is dead. Now, when I say my cell phone is dead, basically all I'm saying is that I done been cut off from the power source. Yeah, if I didn't pay my bill, then uh, uh, AT&T going to cut me off. And so they done cut me off. Now my phone is dead. I can say, hello, hello. I can't talk to nobody. Hello, hello. But if I go and pay my bill, then they'll reconnect me. And once they reconnect me to the power source, then I can talk on the telephone again. I can hear you when you call me. I can hear the telephone ring. My telephone has uh, come alive. AT&T done made my telephone that was dead come alive. And now I can talk to people that I don't even see. They may not even be in the room or anything, but I can talk to them. I don't even see the sound waves, but the sound waves are out there. All because that's part of the invisible world. That's part of the invisible world. Same thing. Your spirit is just like a telephone on the inside of you. Now when we come into this world, our spirit, our telephone is dead. But if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior, then God sends us the Holy Ghost and he quickens our spirit. And he turns our spirit that was dead, he turns it on and make it alive. Therefore, now we can sense things in the spirit world. 
all because our spirit is, has been cut on. We can communicate to God. We can talk to God on the deepest level now, all because our spirit, our telephone has been cut on. So look at your spirit like uh, a telephone on the inside of you. All right, I think that's a good analogy. Number four, so we don't look so far, man has a soul. Those are your five senses for the most part. And sometimes the Bible talks about, you know, your body and your soul. Your, the whole man has a soul. Man has a spirit. He has a telephone on the inside of him where he can get in touch with Almighty God. And, and he can sense things in the spirit world. Have you ever sometime been in a building or let's say you went somewhere and you sat down and you say oh you kind of get a little chill or something and something something is just not right you just you don't know what it is but something is just not right a lot of time you hear people say you know my spirit I'm gonna get up from out of here because my spirit is not right and then you go talk to somebody else and you find out yeah, you tell them where you was at, and they say, child, the reason your spirit wasn't right is because they do some crazy stuff in that house over there. They do some crazy stuff. As a matter of fact, uh, somebody was even murdered in that house, and, but they, they do a lot of sinful stuff in that house. See, because you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, and now the Holy Spirit is making your spirit holy because you went in an unholy place that affected your spirit. It affected your spirit. Your spirit was letting you know, uh-uh, this ain't the place for you. This ain't the place for you. All right, so that was the spirit. But man not only has a, uh, uh, man not only has a spirit, man has a mind. He has a mind. He has a mind. It is that part that man has the ability to perceive and understand feelings and, and judging and determining. And so God has gave man a mind to determine things and, and, and judge things and understand things and perceive things with his mind. Now. A rebellious, unsaved person has a reprobated mind. His mind don't work right. His mind don't work right. Romans uh, 1, 28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobated mind to do those things that are not convenient. And the context, when you bag up and read 27, 26, 25, is dealing here with homosexuality. How the, the women's didn't want to get with the men's anymore. They just wanted to get with the women's. And the men didn't want to get with the women's anymore. They wanted to get with the men's. And so God was trying to block them, but God said, okay, that's what you want. I'm going to get out of the way. And God gave them over to a corrupt mind. And so when you, one of the reasons it's so hard to try to convince a homosexual that you're going the wrong way is because God then gave them over a lot of time to a corrupt mind, a reprobated mind, a mind to just think just evil thought, to think the wrong way. And, in other words, it's just like that man at the beginning of the uh, Bible lesson tonight rolling around in the mud. That's his problem. Uh, he wanted to roll around in the mud, and God said, you ain't, you're not supposed to do that. That's, that's for pigs. That's for pigs. That's for pigs. But he wanted to be a pig. God said, okay, well, go ahead and be a pig. So God done gave him over. Yeah, he loved doing crazy stuff. That's because God done got out of the way. God done got out of the way and, and let his mind, he got, a, he got a, a crazy mind now. He got a crazy mind. And that's what's wrong with our world today, ladies and gentlemen. 
God was trying to get them to, to come his way and think like you're supposed to think. Use your mind the right way. But they didn't want to use their mind the, the right way. They wanted to use their mind the wrong way. So God said, have at it. And so God then gave a lot of people in our world a reprobated mind. Just a no good, I mean, good for nothing mind. And that's why you got so many good for nothing people. Because they got a good for nothing mind. They ain't thinking right. All right, let's go on a little bit further because that's preaching material. But God uses our mind to understand truth. Look what the Bible says in Luke 24, 45. It says, then open their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See, God speaks to your mind. And he enlightens your mind to help you understand things. Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that we may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, at the beginning of our lesson, I was talking about since man done fell into sin, man's mind somewhat done been warped. See, sin warps your mind, but man still have a mind. He's, he still have a soul. Uh, man is still made in the image and the likeness of almighty God. But Man don't think like he's supposed to think. An unsaved person don't think like he's supposed to think. And that's why he has to have the word of God. The word of God is going to cleanse his mind. The word of God is going to shape his mind. The word of God is going to get his mind thinking like it's supposed to think. That's why it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. See, this Bible will transform your mind and start making you think like God think. And so just like Adam before he sinned, he was thinking like God think. All because of uh, he hadn't fallen into sin. So man has a soul, a spirit, a mind, but finally man has a heart. Man has a heart. Man has a heart. Now, when the Bible talks about the heart, uh, he's talking about the inter man. He's talking about the inter man. It speaks of man's personality. Yeah, that's what it's talking about. It speaks of man's personality. It speaks of the inner man. Uh, Watch this YouTube clip. Watch this. In the 21st century, a weapon will be invented like no other. This weapon will be powerful, versatile, and indestructible. It can't be reasoned with. It can't be bargained with. It will feel no pity, no remorse, no pain, no fear. It will have only one purpose, to return to the present and prevent the future. This weapon will be called the Terminator. You're dead, honey. All right. That was the 1984 trailer of uh, the movie Terminator, you know, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, the question is, in that movie, did the Terminator have a heart? It seemed like he was really a machine that was programmed to kill. Yeah, he, he didn't have no personality to be soft. I mean, they wired him up to be a killing machine, to terminate people. Yeah, I'm gonna terminate them. Yeah, and so uh, uh, man is not wired like that. He's not wired like that. God gave man 
a heart. He gave him a heart. It is the seat of man intellectual life. When it talks about the heart, you're talking about man's whole personality. You're talking about the intellectual life. Look at what Psalms 119 and 11 says. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And then uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9 said, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? And we're talking about the intellectual life part of the man. And then the heart is the center of man's emotions. Uh, Matthew 22, verse number 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. It's the emotional part. Now, keep in mind that a lot of these a lot of these things here, the soul, the spirit, the mind, the, the heart, uh, it's not just cut and dry and say that the soul do this, and the, but the spirit don't do this, and the mind do this. And uh, There's some overlapping, particularly as it relates to the heart, as it relates to the heart. You're going to see that the heart deals with also, the, it talks sometimes about the mind, sometimes it talks about the spirit. So... There's a lot of overlapping. There's a lot of overlapping. The heart is where God dwells in the believer. He dwells in one's heart. Look what Peter says. 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord God where? In your hearts. In your hearts. Uh, Ephesians 3.17 says that Christ may dwell where? In your heart by faith. See, that's where God dwells when he comes, when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. He dwells in your heart. 1 Corinthians 1.22 Who has also sealed us and given us the earnestness of the Spirit in our hearts. What, notice that capital S on spirits. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes to live in you, he lives in your heart. Uh, the, and, and so that's what we're talking about. Controls that personality. He controls the whole personality of man. All right. Uh, how should we apply this lesson? How should we apply this lesson? Well, number one, know that every man is made in the image, is made in the image of God. Of God. Know that every man, yeah, even fallen man, yeah, the, the worst person that you see on earth, He's made in the image of God. And that's why we want to try to go out and reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why is that? Because that person is made in the image of God. That's why you don't go around putting people down. Why? Because that person was made in the image of God. And that's why you don't go around feeling sorry for yourself. No person should go around talking about they got, they're suffering from low self-esteem. No, no, you sh shouldn't be going around talking about I got low self-esteem. Why is that? Because you're made in the image and in the likeness of God. Yeah, God used himself as the blueprint when he was making you. It don't get no better than that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you may be suffering from low self-esteem, but that's because you don't know who you are in Jesus Christ. Once you know who you are in Jesus Christ, then you, that low self-esteem got to get away. Then number two, number two. Know that man's, know that the nature of man is different 
from animals and machines. It's different from animals and machines. Yeah. Uh, you're not no animal. You're better than an animal. You're not no machine like the Terminator. You're better than a machine. When God made you, he didn't use an animal as the blueprint. He didn't use no machine as the blueprint. God used himself as the blueprint. And so... Uh, you need to praise the Lord that the Lord uh, used himself as the blueprint. And you're not made to act like an animal. You're not made to act like no machines. And so this world, if you ain't careful, they'll try to start making you so impersonal that you lose your personality of acting like a person and start acting like a machine. People today are so cold and and cold hearted. Uh, that's because they don't know who they are. And they are being shaped into the image of this world. But the Bible said be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Alright let me go on a little bit further. Uh, the last thing. Live like God lives inside of you. Live like God lives on in the inside of you. I ran out of space there. But live like God lives on the inside of you. Live like God lives. Because if you got the Holy Ghost, guess what? God is living on the inside of you. So as I always say, I can't do what I used to do. Why? Because I'm not the same person that I used to be. I'm now a person that is filled with the Holy Ghost. And when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you walk different. Your talk is different. You live different. All because you got somebody different living on the inside of you. You got God, a spirit living on the inside of you. Well, that's our lesson for the night. Hopefully something was said, something was done to help you and encourage you on your Christian journey. Let us have prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for who you are. The God who hear and you still answer prayers. Use this lesson to bless your people in a mighty, mighty way. Whatever they are standing in need of, would you be so kind to bless them with it, whether it's physical, spiritual, financial, uh, whatever it is, bless him with it and we'll be careful to praise you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. All right, that's our lesson for tonight. Thank you again for joining us. Now listen, stay encouraged. Did you hear what I said? I said stay encouraged and Lord willing, we'll see you on Sunday. Good night.